Welcome everybody. Today we have the Yanmar rental and the Chinese mini excavator and they are going to go head to head. But first I want to see if I can fix that little hydraulic leak on here. As you can see, it's coming right out of that top bolt. It's seeping. We're going to see what we can do about that. So, of course, I didn't have a metric Allen, but I do have a Torx that's the right size. This paint's just coming off with my fingers, so that's not a good sign. Uh, but we're going to put the impact on it and see what we can do here. I had both better and worse ideas. I need an extension. Came right up. No cross threading. It looks as though it's the paint. They painted it and then they put this on over it. Yeah, no wonder. So uh, we're going to clean this up. Yeah, it was the paint. The paint was 100% the issue. Okay. Not cross threaded. I was wrong. Uh, I'm gonna get some brake clean and some towels, clean everything up real good, and put her back on. I bet it won't leak. A little brake clean never hurt any hydraulic systems, right? Assuming not. Let's get some this here. Just get it on everything, it doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, we got no cross threading. Let's hope we can uh, stay that way. And uh... all right, we did not go righty loosey, so that is always fantastic. Drove her right on home. Let's see. I mean, look at that cheap ass paint. Oh well. I'm kind of glad that's all it seems to be. So I'm going to fire it up. And if nothing comes out around there, which we'll be able to see very clearly now with that paint gone, we're in good shape. Okay, um, it appears as though we have no leak. Earlier it was leaking in an idle. Uh, what I'm wondering now is are these other bolts gonna have the same issue? They shouldn't because these ones shouldn't be in where there's fluid, but Good to know if you get one of these, the first thing you should do, scrape off this shitty paint, take this bolt out, clean it up, put it back in. Now you know. So real quick before we get started here, see this one doesn't have an actual pattern changer on it. To change the pattern, you would have to go in here 
and switch some lines around and change the controls. You could do it, you just have to flip flop four lines. On this one, it's still not as easy as a lever. Look at what I had to do here. So you pop these two rubber covers off. Boom, because I operate standard ISO. So you see in that representation, you got the gap right there. So what that does, look closely. When I move this joystick, You see how that, it moves the fork on this side, right? So to change the pattern, I loosen this bolt, slide this plate over, and then the control grabs this fork, therefore switching the function on that joystick. Same thing applies over here, shift it over into this fork, and there you go. What's up guys, it's Diggit Starns, and today, you're putting the cheap Chinese mini excavator against a name brand of the same weight class. This is a Yanmar SV08. It has a two-cylinder diesel engine. This right here is the Neoman uh, E10. It has a 13 and a half horsepower single cylinder gas motor. So $24,000 versus $9,000 all in shipped to your front door. So, first thing I want to address, this one did come with a canopy. It's missing a leg for the canopy, so I currently only have one leg for the rollover protection system. So, I'm gonna make another one and then it'll have the roll bar and canopy on there, but for the sake of these tests, it's not gonna have it. Don't worry, we're professionals everything should be fairly okay. So let's dive into it. First thing, we're gonna take a look at each machine, compare and contrast the different features, um, what I might like, what I don't like. We're gonna be getting some dimensions. So I, I don't wanna get too, too crazy with it, looking at nuts and bolts and whatever. But um, we're gonna go over this and then after we go over this, we're gonna have an array of tests. We're doing a drag race. We're doing a lifting competition. We're doing a swing torque competition. We're doing a trench digging test. And so far, guys, I honestly think that the cheap Chinese mini is going to dig faster, but we're gonna find out. Right off the bat, what you're gonna notice is the two different boom designs. So the Yanmar has a higher digging point this one's even a little bit further up on the hill. So the height to hinge pin is going to be higher. So you have more reach with the Yanmar. Now with the boom design that we have on the cheap Chinese mini, it looks like it's more geared towards digging depth. We're gonna see, we're gonna go to max digging depth. Next thing you're gonna notice, this one has a variable track width. So you can actually make this narrower than it already is. Max width, outside of track to outside of track, 32 and a half inches. You can narrow it down and you can make this guy 26 and three quarter inches. That's how narrow you can make it. So, same weight, this one's narrower, it feels like it has a smaller operator station because it does, but it is still in the si same size bracket as this one due to its weight. So that's an interesting thing about it. So we got the width right there. Now if you come over to here, there's no variable track width on this one. We'll do it outside of track to outside of track. This one you are gonna be at a full 36 inches. So, if you're looking to get in through a house door, this one's gonna limit you. This is gonna be the one you're gonna want if you're going through a man door. So, you know, it's all about preference. You're gonna find a lot of things that you might like about one and not the other. I'm just here to provide you with the facts and you can make your own decision on whether or not you think it's worth it. Next, cylinder guards. 
Yanmar has a cylinder guard. Also, it has a cylinder guard down here because I've broken fittings off on excavators that don't have this guard, so this little guard can be a lifesaver. All of them have grease points on every pin, but this one actually has all the grease circs. As you'll go along on this, there is a grease fitting. If you look at this right here, that's where a grease circ should be. This is where a grease circ should be. So it has all the ports for it, but some of them are missing on this excavator. Track pattern is very similar. They both have rear sprocket, front idler, and two rollers. As far as ride quality, they're pretty much the same. Heck, even the sprocket looks pretty much the same, except for the fact that this is going to be, it has an actual hub. I'm not sure if it's a reduction hub, but as you can see, it has an actual hub on there. So what that does is that puts some of the motor over this way so it doesn't stick out so far. Look back here, you have motor guards. So with getting the motor further out into the hub, what that does is it just makes sure that less of it sticks out on this backside. Now, if you go over here, you will notice that it has a cone shaped, slightly offset hub design. And then the motors stick out a little bit further. There's not as much protection, but here's some food for thought. If you ever have a drive motor issue on this machine, it would be very inexpensive and easy to fix on your own with basic tools. That Yanmar on the other hand, it's going to be expensive. Just food for thought. Now, next thing you'll notice is the Yanmar has the independent swing boom. So it's going to be able to independently swing the boom from the body. The Yanmar also has a pattern changer. And later in this video, I'll insert the clip of how you actually change the pattern because it's not as easy as just flipping a lever. I show you how it works. I show you the access point, all that good stuff. So that'll be another clip later in the video. Now, this is not a two speed. They're both single speed and they are both slow. You guys have already seen the underbelly. Uh, you got your key. You have a swing lock. So if you don't want this bad boy swinging around, you probably gotta find, yep, yep, there we go. It's a swing lock, now it can't swing. So look, if I move this lever right now, well, I have the lock engaged, right? So this one actually has a lever lock because both of these work off of hydraulic valve blocks. So if I, it's not like a large excavator where when it's off and you wiggle the handles, nothing happens. This one, so you have to engage that. That way you can't be hitting valves if you're doing it like this. So you have engine warning, oil pressure, coolant temp, battery, hour meter. That's the extent of it. It has all of your diagrams on here, all your what you want to use, your fuel, your lift chart, your control patterns. It has all that stuff. Of course, it has the wraps. It is a folding wrap, so if you need to get in somewhere tight, you unpin this, you fold it back. Also, in the back area, very heavy counterweight very heavy counterweight but if you're swinging in a tight area this is what's going to take the brunt of any impacts but it does seem to be very strong now pop the hood here it is two-cylinder yanmar engine and yanmar is a japanese machine but if you look at the engine right there it is actually assembled in China. So some of you might find that interesting. So this is going to be your traditional small heavy equipment design. You have all your stuff. You got your radiator right here because this is going to be liquid cooled. You have your hydraulic oil fill. Um, 
your engine oil dipstick right here. This is gonna be your throttle right here. It's your throttle cable. Now, it seems like it can spin a lot faster than what they got it set at. But this is, this is how it came from factory. You could get a lot more power out of it, but we're not gonna tamper with it. You got your oil fill, fuel filter, fuel filter shut off. Got your battery, your little fuel tank. You actually have a, what is, wait, is this? Oh, that's just a vent. I thought it was a gauge, it's just a vent. This thing got fuel in it? Those bastards gave me an empty machine. We're gonna have to fill that. No shit. I mean, it's only a gallon, but gallon and a half, maybe two. I'll put some diesel on it. Bastards, I paid 200 bucks for this. <laughs> uh, your coolant overflow, air filter. So that's, that's pretty much it. So everything on this is gonna be a little bit harder to get to. It's still gonna be very simple. All your hydraulics and everything are pretty much gonna be under this plate. But that rear counterweight's really gonna get in the way of any rear serviceability that you have to do. So if you're looking to use something like this around your homestead or whatever, you have some small home projects, um, it's expensive. Should it be more reliable? Yes. Should it last longer? Yes. But it it's more complex. Take that however you want to. But there's that operator station I find myself to be more cramped on this one ergonomically I think the controls are a little better but there's not you're, you're cramped I think that one's a little bit more comfortable for me. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything on here. It's very simple. So, obviously, this one's a better construction, longevity diesel engine. But the basics of them, they're very, very similar. Now, that's going to be a fiberglass around there, thin steel, plastic. There's no plastic on this. This tower right here, metal, 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 metal. I'm not sure if that's better or worse, but like accessibility. Let's say you can change the pattern on this, but you have to switch around hydraulic hoses. But if you needed to get in here, this is going to be much simpler to disassemble than that. That's going to be more complex. Again, take it however you'd like to. Briggs and Stratton gas engine. We already went over that. I did fix the hydraulic leak. It was very, very simple. And the seat can go even further back than it was. Oh, shit. My ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. Stretching out. Okay. If you guys have anything else you want to see, drop a comment. Uh, one more thing. There's a lot more hard lines on that. There's a lot more soft lines on this. But soft lines are easy to replace. So I'm... Um, my initial thoughts right now. This one has a bigger bucket. So, same weight class. That one has the diesel engine. It should have more torque. It should have more counterweight. The blade is also positioned forward more. So with the blade over the front, it should be able to pick up more weight and have more breakout force. This one has the bigger bucket. In straight line trenching, this should have the advantage. I predict this one's going to outperform it. We'll see what happens. That's my prediction. Let's go get it set up. Okay, so this is going to be our digging test. We're going to be going two feet down 
and six feet back with this trench. This machine should have the advantage because it has the smaller bucket. So we tried doing it starting a hole in normal ground, but this clay is way too hard and way too dry. We'd be here all day. So we're gonna start it off this ledge. Grant, get the timer ready. Full throttle, blade in front of me, starting position. Ready? Yep. Go. Yeah, six foot hole, hair over. So we'll, I mean, we'll do the exact same length on the other hole. Depth, two feet. That Don't mind that loose stuff, it's like two foot one inch. So we'll, uh, that was bad. That was bad. Um, I. Even with the bigger bucket, I truly think the Chinese Mini has it. Let's go get it. All right, so the time to beat is five minutes and 55 seconds. This machine should be at a disadvantage. One, it has less counterweight and the blade is closer to the track frame. And two, it has a wider bucket. So for a linear trench like this, it's going to have to move more material than that Yanmar. I think this is gonna beat it. So we're gonna get the timer. We're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going the exact length as that one. And so I'm gonna go full throttle and get in the starting position. One second. All right. Let's check the hole. Just as long, if not longer. Just as deep. But something to take into consideration the width
Call that 16 inches. This one over here. Fourteen inches. <clears throat> With that said, this one moved the same amount of material, or I'm sorry, more material in the same amount of time. I think with the same size bucket, this guy wins. I think so. I really do. There you have it. things can lift so this idler right here is 349.8 pounds so we're gonna call it 350 pounds you got it and then from there we're gonna go up we got 45 pound weights 35 pound weights 25 pound weights we are gonna find the point at which it either tips or no longer lifts it so here we go 350 pounds. Alright, you did that, so that means it'll list most of your mothers. Now, we had a 45. Alright, so that is... <laughs> 395 pounds. Did 395, feels a little light in the ass. Run another 45, see what you do. So what, uh, this would be... 350 plus 90. 440. 440. All right, did 440. It's feeling light in the ass. But... I don't know how much more the straps can take. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't bust in your face. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> How much is this? 475. Oh. That's got it. Hey, At an oh. idle. Let's get another strap. 
Yeah, I'm kind of worried about that one. Yeah, you keep adding on that one. That thing's going to tear. Alright, what do we got? 525. I think it's going to do it. Even 200. Want to add 200? We'll have to take a bunch off to add 200. I think it's probably only got 50 more pounds in. Yeah. Grant, how much you weigh? Like 115, 120. 115. All right, let's take 50 off and add you. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so far they've been fine though, so I trust them about as much as gas station sushi. Hop on. <laughs> okay, so what do we got on there? All right, plus this. 350 plus 90 plus 35. 525 plus 115. 605. See if it'll pick 605. What do we say 605? 555 is what you got right now. Including Grant? Including Grant is 555. measured and this one has a four inch shorter reach over the blade and the blade is longer like the blade is further from the track so this machine is going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to tipping point but this one ran out of hydraulic power to continue lifting before it ran out of uh, blade force so We'll see. First test, 350 pounds.
get and we and we put a, I I put a 25 pound weight in the bucket if it picks it this guy wins So far, it's come even in the digging competition, moving more dirt. It got, it beat the other one in the drag race, and it lifts more weight. I mean, at a third of the cost. Everybody's like, oh, longevity, well, it's never gonna last that long. I think it will. We're gonna see. We're gonna make that part one of the tests. So that's part one of the side-by-side -side tests. Let us know what else you want to test and we'll try and make it happen. But so far, this cheap little guy has outlifted, outrun, and in my opinion, outdug. <laughs>